What is a plunet? What if a moon went rogue and acted like a planet? It can happen, astronomers say, and they gave it a lunatic name. Let's get started. Imagine an exoplanet, a gas giant orbiting its star while the moon orbits the planet itself. Now suppose the moon turns rogue as it moves nearer to its star, breaking away, or being forced out of its orbit by the planet, and going off on its own trip, in effect behaving like a planet in its own right. Imagine the Earth without its moon. It might seem like the ultimate empty nest syndrome. After all, in a sense, the moon is the offspring of our planet. Research suggests it formed about 4.5 billion years ago, when a Mars-sized body smashed into Earth and sent a broken chunk into orbit. They've been together ever since. A family, in a sense. But the moons of other planets, called exomoons, may eventually leave home. They break free of their parents' orbit. Sometimes it's the result of their own struggle to be free. Sometimes it's their planet's decision to evict them. These former moons are, rather adorably, referred to as plunets, a portmanteau term made of moon and planet. The universe is chock full of technical mouthfuls like period luminosity relations, spectroscopic binaries, and Widmanstetten patterns. Some even sound like a Brit choking on a steak! Just this once, the scientific community just mashed the words together and came up with a word of absolute cuteness. Plunet! Go ahead and say it out loud! And while we're murmuring about the moon, try Moon Moon. That's what certain fun-loving scientists suggest we call the offspring of those moons. Although, ultimately, they settled on the more sobering submoon. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before a moon can have a moon of its own, or before they are even spotted, it's Plunet for now. To understand a Plunet, you must first understand moons outside Earth's solar system. These exomoons, as they are called, are still hypothetical. Why have astronomers not yet confirmed the existence of a single exomoon when they found over 4,000 exoplanets? Have the exomoons turned into planets? While many exoplanets, or planets outside the solar system, have been discovered in the last decade, the search for the first confirmed exomoon has come up empty. Scientists have identified many possible exomoons, but so far data has been too inconsistent to label anything. But in context of our solar system, why have astronomers not been able to find moons that orbit gas giants, like Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn? The detectability of a planet not only depends on its size, but also on its orbital distance from the planet. Also, when moons become planets, their planethood may be fairly short-lived. About half of the planets in the researchers' simulations crashed into either their planet or star within about a half a million years. A million years is short in cosmic time, and such short lives might make planets more difficult to spot. If such a scenario of spotting them does take place, these planets could potentially explain several puzzling phenomena. They might help to explain some bizarre features of planets outside the solar system. For example, moon debris from such crashes could lead to a giant ring systems around planets. That debris might even be what makes up the 37 rings that encircle exoplanet J1407b. Or the planet may look more like a comet. If the planet, when it was a moon, had an icy surface or an atmosphere and then escaped its planet and moved closer to its star, the star's heat would evaporate the ice. That would give the planet a tail like a comet's. If the planet starts to evaporate, it could grow a long, light-blocking tail. That tail might explain strangely flickering stars like Tabby's star. But in the end of it all, despite our romanticizing it, these planets remain hypothetical. Ah, to be or not to be. Regardless, scientists are planning for eventualities. The scientist's focus is on the hypothetical moons that would orbit a type of planet that scientists have dubbed a hot Jupiter. It is essentially a Jupiter-sized planet that is far closer to its stars than Jupiter. Some scientists believe that hot Jupiters form at the very edges of their solar systems and migrate inward. If those migrating hot Jupiters had large moons like Ganymede, Europa, Io, and others, what happens to them during the move? Running simulations, scientists found that in close to 50% of the cases, a young planet may survive ejection from the planetary system or collision with its parent planet and host star. So even if the moon is rejected by its planet, it could still be a functioning entity. But again, the story is the same. Finding a planet in the wild could be difficult! Ah! However, if any satellite can find one, it's the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, TESS, that NASA launched last year. Might be just the one to do so. Gosh, it has already found 21 new planets, making the quest for alien life more, flipping more optimistic! 
Tess, along with the old data from the now-defunct Kepler, is competent to give more insight on the matter, thus enriching the research. <sighs> to think our moon might soon desert us and become a planet as well. It is moving away from the Earth at the rate of 4 centimeters every year, but at that rate, it will take 5 billion years to actually forsake us. By that time, the sun would already be on its last legs. Brrr, scary thought! Shake it off! So, getting back to planets. Couldn't hurt to dream, though, right? What if our lunatic lunar kid takes off from under our wings? Perhaps someday, if conditions are just right. As in, if our planet gets hit by a big enough object for a piece of it to fall off. It may have babies of its own. Adorable little moon moo uh, uh, sub moons. Aww! But, an effed up GPS system, the disturbed tidal waves, and with it, our weather systems, massive hurricanes, temperature fluctuations, a possible plate tectonics, ecosystem die offs, and possibly a few super volcanoes will be huge prices to pay. Uh. Yeah... Nah, not worth it. So, hopefully our kid stays with us as a tenant! For good! Stella. That's that, guys! Let us know your thoughts on the subject down below. And don't forget to subscribe! Until then, stay smart!